The show starts in two minutes. Where is he? on me. Okay, and then the next one. I'm late. dark in here. It would be pretty nice if these light bulbs actually, you know, lit up the room. How's it going, everyone? You guys ready for a great show? Hey, what are you doing here? The show starts in 30 seconds. We gotta go. Go get changed and get downstairs. This guy. Sorry I'm late, everyone. Thank you all for coming. This is the late mid-evening show with Matt Schmidt. I'm your server, Matt. And today's special, we have a lot of fun and a lot of laughs. And that was the first one right there. So you know you're in for a good time. So this is our last project here for Set D at BCIT. It's putting all of our skills to the test that we've learned over the last two years to make a big show celebrating our time in the television video production program. Tonight, we've got a bunch of compilations for you. We've got interviews with some guests. We have a live musical guest here to perform for you tonight. Get excited. Let's hear it. Yeah, come on. And we have an interactive awards segment at the end of the night where you will get to vote on the winners. So that's pretty exciting, too. First of all, we're going to take a look at Studio One Live, one of the first assignments that we did here in our first year where we all take a turn through each of the positions of a live show so we get to know what it's like making a production kind of like the one you're watching right now. Let's take a look. the mustard, please? Yes. Thank you. There you are. Okay, let's get a layer of that on. It's nice and cheese. It's a lot of mustard. I like my mustard. <laughs> Put that back. Oh, that looks super. Oh, thank you. Holy guacamole, that looked tasty. Thank you all for watching, and be sure to join us next week, where Aunt Swolnio will be showing us how to get huge. You don't go all the way, and then you can just slowly feel it. And you can kind of feel it in your back a little, but mainly in your uh, core area and then this just works up your upper area. And it, it, again, it's just you just keep doing it until over time, and then it'll get better and better. And then there are like twist crunches and twist sips you can do, but those are just later on stuff. You can definitely feel it in your stomach for sure. While bulging biceps, my eyes have gone swollen from watching them. But join us next time for Charles Jeffers' Gucci Slides. And thank you very much, and that's me Studio One Live. Yeah, please cut some more. So I'm gonna cut, I'm gonna put this on right here. Make sure you get some of that going. Uh, right there. And then I'll finally do the two oh. last pieces. Marcus, oh. cut yourself. No. What did I tell you oh. not to cut yourself? Okay. Oh. Oh, no. You ruined my Gucci. Okay, anyways, we're gonna keep going. 
And here's the finished product right over here. Wow, all the oh, way. Wow. You are a true artist. That's Thank so you. Cool. That's a nice color. Why did you choose pink? Because I like pink. Oh. Our next ingredient is the corn, and that's there because, well, I like corn. What's that orangey that's, stuff? That's tomato soup. Now, a lot of people oh. use tomato paste in chili, but I use tomato soup because tomato soup is a lot thicker and a lot easier to deal with and adds a sweetness to the, to the chili as well. So then we're going to take the meatballs. Those are big meatballs. Put them on the plate here. And then we're going to take our sauce and just drizzle it on the meatballs. My that meat. is looking good. And then you can just eat it. That looks pretty delicious. So um, that's all the time we have for today. Um, thank you for watching Studio 2 Live. Um, next week, uh, you'll have nothing because we're canceled, which is very sad. Um, but thanks for watching. We'll see you. We won't. We can't. Wow. Welcome back, everybody. That was pretty great. Wow. We sure looked like a bunch of babies back then. Hard to believe that was only two years ago. And look how far we've come since then. I'm going to bring out someone to talk about his infamous Studio One Live demonstration, Charles Jeffers. Let's bring him on out here. Woo! Oh, What's great to happening? see you. What's going on? Woo! Oh, great to have you on the show. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks for so, having me. So, tell me. Yeah. What was going on with those Gucci slides? Did Marcus actually cut himself there? All right, well, we're having a slow day on set, as you do with as uh, you Studio do. One Live. Kind of sucks. Uh, so <laughs> me, me and Marcus kind of decided to, you know, shake things up a little bit and add a fun prank. And as you saw, we decided to pretend Marcus seriously injured himself on camera without okay. telling anyone. And, and you use what to do that again? Oh, some ketchup from uh, Tim Hortons. Oh, so that was a ketchup packet. Yeah, yeah, we wow. stuck it in his pocket and yeah, didn't tell anyone. Yeah, and you got in a bit of trouble for that, eh? Yeah, I think Marcus lost some uh, participation marks. Ooh, <laughs> those participation marks are pretty important. That's a whole 10%. It'll get you. That's pretty wild. Yeah, yeah, it was pretty well, bad. we're going to bring out someone else who's recently gotten in trouble for a prank pulled here at BCIT. Please welcome Spencer Fassett. <laughs> How's it going? Uh, great to have you on the show. Hey, good seeing you. It's been a minute. Yeah, right? So, you are part of uh, the Multiversity Production Company, is that right? Yes, that is absolutely correct. All right. And uh, Multiversity was kind of the butt of a joke here in SC10 recently. Can yes. you tell me a little bit about that? Oh, it was great. Um, <laughs> so, apparently, down in the journalist wing, one of the offices got decorated into a Multiversity production office, and we had no idea what that was all about. Really? What kind of stuff did they put in there? Oh, it was crazy. There were, like, our social media info. There was one of our posters. Um, and I think the craziest thing was there was a picture of us, and that's actually how we got identified. Right. I think it's actually this picture right here yeah, of Multiversity. <laughs> I mean, you see this, you see Spencer in there, you put two and two together as base of detective work. That's good journalism, if I do say so. <laughs> yeah. Wow. So it was just crazy because, like, when I went in, I saw this. I was completely speechless. I didn't know what to say. It was just. Yeah, I mean, because you guys had no idea what was going on, right? No idea. Well, Who I've did? got some news for you. One of the culprits behind it is sitting on this couch no. right next to you. <laughs> no, seriously? All right, I guess it's time to uh, come clean. Me and a few other uh, students around the building, mostly cursed images, uh, we thought it'd be funny to frame you guys uh, doing something like that. So oh. I think it worked out pretty well. We got I it. mean, if you see an empty office, you got to make something. You got to fill it with things. Yeah, that's yeah. literally the only <laughs> answer. I'd say literally. so, yeah. OK. Well, safe to say that there's been a fair bit of a rivalry between cursed images and multiversity. Yep. Definitely mm -hmm. was not the first time. But <laughs> this prank definitely brought it to a boiling point. And it's been steaming for a while since then. So it's time to add the pasta so we can have some dinner. After the break, we're going to come back and we're going to have a challenge so we can see who the better production company is once and for all. We'll be right back. Is now in session. Charles Jeffers stands accused of framing multiversity by creating a production office for them in an unused room in the journalist wing. Your Honor, we've been framed. Oh, snap. Those fools at Cursed Images think they can get the upper hand on us. That's a spicy meatball. Why would we make an office for them? Next time on Judge Benny. 
Here at VCIT, you learn a variety of skills to be job ready. Marketing, scripts, commercials, promos, VCIT. Coiling cables, lights, people, take it all in. Movies, music videos, news, poker. Why gamble on your school experience? VCIT. Let's get it. Fast pace, knowledge, real life skills. Look at yourself. Now look at me. You wish you were me. You have no skills. And me? I have all the skills. Why? It's BCIT Video Production. All right, welcome back, everybody. We are over here on the challenge stage. We have our representatives from Multiversity on my left. We have Spencer Fassett, we have Walter McFarlane, and we have Michael Trigiero over there. And over here from Cursed Images, we've got Kenny, Charles, and Sarah. We're gonna have a competition here. We're gonna find out who's who. We're gonna do three challenges, starting with coiling cables, because as you know, coiling cables is the bread and butter of the TV industry. You gotta know you're over under. So, Charles, I mean, sorry, Kenny and Spencer. <laughs> Take your cables and let's get ready. So the first person to coil their cable with the least amount of knots is going to win this segment. <laughs> All right, are you two ready? Ready, set, go. Spencer's not looking too good here. <laughs> Kenny is, looks like he's got a pretty good chance of winning this here. I don't, I don't want to call it right away, but I have a good, I have a good hunch of who's going to win this one. It's, uh, it's coming. Kenny's is actually looking pretty decent. It's better than most of Kenny's coils. <laughs> Spencer hasn't even started yet, really. <laughs> and it looks like Kenny has won. So that's one point for Cursed Images. Good, I mean, good job, Spencer, just not good enough. <laughs> Next up, we have the cookie challenge. We're gonna have Charles, for real this time, coming up with Walter. They're gonna put one of these cookies on their forehead, and they've gotta get it into their mouth without using their hands. So first person to get the cookie in their mouth wins, but if they drop the cookie on the ground, they're disqualified, and that could happen pretty quick, so who knows. Are you ready? Three, two, one. Cookie time. Walters hasn't even moved yet, but it's... <laughs> Come on, Charles. Charles almost got it. It's <laughs> close. It's on his tooth. And Charles is one. That's another point for Cursed Images. Walter did a pretty good job, though, for balancing. It's going back on the head. All right. Normally, because Cursed Images won two out of three, they would have won by now. But our last challenge is worth a little bit more because our last challenge is the cinnamon challenge. So we're gonna have Sarah and Michael come up, take a good old spoonful of this cinnamon, and we're gonna see what happens. You gotta scoop a little bit more in there. A little bit more, Michael. Come on, come on. You're a big man. That's a good chunk. Okay, Sarah? A little bit more, you can, you can do better. Or not, that's fine. All right, so first person to swallow all the cinnamon wins. We have some water on standby. We might also wanna get a barf bucket cause who really knows what's gonna happen here. Are you two ready? All right, three, two, one, bottoms up. Well, that was quite a cloud of cinnamon. I can smell it, I can taste it. Sarah's still doing all right though. That's uh, pretty good. Well, it looks like Cursed Images has proven that we are the best. So, well done everybody. You guys did pretty good too. Walter's still bouncing, good job. Great job, Spencer. Well, that was pretty great. Next up, 
we're going to look at the trailers that we at Set D have made for our original short productions. And after we come back, I'll be talking to Michael about what it was like being a director. Take us away. I'm worried about these bad dreams you've been having lately. They're nothing, dear. They're nothing to worry about. Nothing to worry about at all. Hey! You're really alive! Oh, what? Are you out of your mind? <laughs> okay, this is not a dream. More like a nightmare. Have you seen the world around you lately? Everyone is gone. No. You're wrong. No telling who to trust these days. Go to bed, and tomorrow everything will be okay. I'll be here for you, as I always am. I'm not going anywhere. Yeah, James was the only one who really got out. Is he enjoying that big city life? Get you good for small towners now. There must be some stuff we missed, though. Definitely missed the trees. <laughs> so that's how green this place is. Mm -hmm. The air, the mountains, rivers and lakes. A lot to miss. Welcome back, everybody. Well, I don't know about you, but I'm pretty excited to watch those shorts. Now, we're going to bring out the director of Aftermath, our cinnamon boy, Michael Trigero. Let's welcome him. Hey, hello. Hey. Welcome back. Glad to be on, man. How are you feeling after that cinnamon? I'm uh, feeling a little, a little dried out. It was, it was pretty, uh, pretty harsh stuff. Well, I got you a little cup oh. of water. Oh, thank you. No problem. <laughs> Wash that down. <coughs> What the hell's in this cup? It's rubbing alcohol. Jesus Christ, man. Let's get to the interview. Well, all right. So, how about that weather, huh? Oh, it's, it's crazy out there, man. It's like raining cats and dogs. No, you goob. I'm talking about the weather for your short from the trailer. It was looking pretty moist out Obviously. there. Obviously. Sorry about that. Yeah, no, when we, were, when we were filming Aftermath, it was just sleeting and snowing and raining pretty much the entire day. Uh, originally, the forecast had said like six o'clock after we'd finished, but no, we were not that lucky. Oh, well, that's what you get for uh, shooting the shorts in the middle of winter in Vancouver. It's all part of the job. Yeah. Well, you must have learned quite a bit directing Aftermath. I know I sure learned a lot directing Old Friends. Oh, I definitely learned a lot. Like this, this is my first movie I've ever directed. It's just such a such a daunting <laughs> task that. Uh, oh, sorry, that's rude. Do you want? Oh, some? yeah, of course, man. <laughs> Just remember to leave me the sticker. Okay. Mmm. Mmm, it's really delicious. Let's go. That part's got mm. all the fiber in it, too. Mmm. The adhesive really gives you all the nutrients you mm. need to get through the day. So good. Keeps you regular. Mmm. All right. So, sorry, continue. Yeah. Yeah. It was, um, it, was a, it was a whole lot of hard work we put into the film, and some parts of it weren't exactly as I imagined, but ultimately, I'm very proud of uh, my group and everything we've put together, and ultimately... <laughs> I can't wait to show it to the world. I totally agree. Well, whenever we find out when and where we're going to be showing those shorts, we'll let you guys know, so maybe you can uh, come watch them as well. We're going to cut to a quick commercial break, and when we come back, it'll be time for our live musical guest. Are you guys excited? Yeah. Woo! All right, we'll be right back. This party is so boring. There's no hot guys here. <laughs> Look at that. Yeah, that is so hot. Oh, look at those curves. You should totally go over there. Hi. Hi. Can I borrow the Frank? Frank's Red Hot. It's so damn hot. Don't go astray. 
unless your phone is away. Ladies and gentlemen, Ryan Newberry and the Tater Tot Thoughts. Happy anniversary, baby. You're the best. Hey, man, how do you feel this record? Let me show you. <sighs> Educate yourself. Sex toys and seminars to keep the spark alive. Hem Clinics, free, safe, anonymous. Welcome back, everyone. How about that live musical performance? Hard to believe that they were only here in the studio moments ago performing live. <laughs> Impeccable. What a great job. All right, we've got two more people that we're going to be bringing out and talking about a couple more things. We've got the producers of Aftermath and the producer of Old Friends. <laughs> we've got Antonio Perea and Aurora Peters. Glad to have you on the show, Good Aurora. To see you Can't again. say the same for you, Antonio. <laughs> <laughs> yucky, yucky, yucky. <laughs> All right. So, safe to say that the short productions is probably the biggest thing that we've had to put on over our time here at BCIT. Yes. That for must sure. have been quite a time putting all that together. Oh yeah. yeah it was. It was uh, excuse uh, you me, know. Antonio. Let the lady speak. Come on. <laughs> Come on You'll have your turn. Yeah, so being the producers for Old Friends was quite the experience. Um, kind of being the person in charge is obviously a very daunting task. A very but stressful, for um, sure. you got to put out stressful. a lot of fires. Yes, a very many fires to put out, for sure. But we only had a few mental breakdowns, only one cry in the closet. So Perfect, that's was the fine. right number, that's but on par. Yeah, it was a good experience and it was awesome. a lot of fun. So and Antonio, you filmed some of Aftermath at your house, correct? Yeah, we filmed a, actually a good amount of the scenes at my house. Really? And you know, it, it was uh, difficult to you know work around my family and my dog. Of course. But oh right, your work. dogs. What's your dog's name again? Oliver. Oliver. Right. Do we have a picture of Oliver? Can we throw Oliver? Oh, look at that cutie pie. <laughs> oh, how old is he? 
Four years old. Four years? Oh, a lot of years ahead of him. And it was surprising because he actually behaved on set. Wow, that's a first. <laughs> it really every, was. Every time that I've been over there, he's just been <laughs> 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 So if, uh, if he's behaving around a ton of people, then that's, that's fantastic. So speaking of fires, I'm sure you guys have put out a lot of fires across other projects you've done. Oh, yeah. What kinds oh, yeah. of other stories do you have to tell me here? Um, I actually have a bit of a confession. Um, Is that so? So in first year, we have to do these things called music videos. And one of the uh, rules was you weren't allowed to have classmates. Mm. But unfortunately, before my music video, my actors fell through. So I had to kind of, you know, what am I going to do? I have to put out this fire. Mm. So uh -oh. I got some masks, and I put them on some of my classmates. Mm. <laughs> and I got a good mark, so I don't think the teachers noticed. Hmm, who could that but be? Yeah. I think there's a couple more photos of them. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I wonder who, who it Who could do you be? think that is? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Mm. Oh, he actually broke his ankle on that one. I right actually there. fell. I didn't get paid for that. Yeah. Yeah, we just ran around a park with some masks and blood on them and a bat. It was no big deal. Just saw some, a few pedestrians oh, yeah. who no kind of looked at us. I yeah. probably thought you were doing something pretty sinister yeah, in the woods but there. No cops are called, so. Oh, fine. well, then as long as there's no <laughs> cops. Have had a sign. Fine. I mean, <laughs> do what you got to do. All right, we are going to be moving on to our last segment. We're going to take a quick commercial break, and when we come back, it's time for the awards. back everybody so probably would have been good to tell you beforehand but that was actually a compilation of music videos that we made in first year but you know it's a live show so mistakes happen all right it's our final segment of the show our awards segment so it's the it's the actually the first annual late mid evening show with Matt Schmidt Schmidt Awards rolls right off the tongue so we here at the show thought that it wouldn't be right to finish the year without giving some special awards to some special people for doing a really special job at some special things. So we're going to play some clips for you. And using the pen and paper that you've been given, you're going to vote on who you think should win the award. And afterwards, we're going to have Michael, Spencer, and Walter come around and collect that. We'll tally it up, and then we'll announce the winners at the very end of the show. Let's take a look at the nominees. The nominees for best prop. The validator from Bad Carmen. Caffeine will be short and skip the last section. Starting with the validation. The validator from The Girl in the Lens. Fine so far. 
move on to the next step. For this portion of the interview, we're going to be connecting you to the polygraph. The validator from Split Ends. And the validator from Synthetic. All right, please mark down on your sheets who you would like to win the award for best prop. And next up, the nominees for best lighting recreation performance by a classmate. Haunted by the kiss that you should have never have given me. My heart is beating, hoping that that kiss would not become a scar. You are in my very soul. Vinny was in charge of the tomato sauce. Oh, get the smell of that. Patrika. That's uh, three kinds of flavoring meat. Beef off. Yeah, real beef and real pork. Uh, I felt to sauce. use too many onions, but it was still a very good sauce. Thin. How's that sauce? It's fine. As cooks go, I'm okay. Not great, but okay. Megan was a good cook. You'll learn to be a good cook. Power cut. Backup power activated. I want to be with you. Question five. Do you want to be with me? <laughs> All right. Please vote for who you think should win best performance. Now, the award for sleepiest boy. Charles Jeffers in the middle of Ikea. Ryan Newbery in Kenny's Gross Room. Where are you getting this from when you stand in so confident? It's in the literature, man. Hitler like was going to literature. Mainline historical books about SS castles where they go to Hitler and what blood. Me in Antonio's sweaty basement. And finally, Isaiah in his favorite spot, the VTR. Once again, please choose on your paper who you would like to win each award. Michael and Spencer will be around to collect your votes, and then we will tally the winners. I'd say take your time, but we really got to get this done, so hurry up and circle one of those bad boys, all right? <laughs> now, while they're finishing up, let's take a look at some of our favorite moments from over the years of the television and video production program. Roll a clip. My favorite time in this program is when we learn how to use After Effects so that we could do stuff like this. My favorite moment from BCIT is when we set up a racetrack in this studio and Ryan had his bike and we were racing it around in circles. We were going so fast, dodging obstacles, and then we had this epic wipeout at the end. So much fun. All right, my favorite moment at BCIT has to be in second term when I, uh, when I shot the music video for my friend's band and just kind of coming up with all these crazy ideas. There was a gorilla fight. It was, it was absurd, but I finally got to make something real out of my head. It was like my baby, essentially. My favorite moment was probably the motion graphics class. It's just a ton of fun to create cool visual effects. My favorite moment was staying up for 35 hours straight editing our scene adaptation last term and then going to class the next morning and almost falling asleep. Uh, my favorite thing about this program is all the connections we've built, um, both inside and outside. We've met some great people. I've also gotten to direct our, my first mini doc, which is pretty sick. Got to hang out with dogs all day, which was neat. My favorite moment probably when I was at BCIT was when I got to hang out in the back of a car while shooting uh, our short Old Friends. It was a good time. My favorite part of BCIT was meeting all these creative people and seeing them every day, and I'm going to miss them when I leave. 
What I like best about BCIT were the instructors. The instructors here really bu built up my confidence. If I had instructors like these when I was a kid, I'd be a lot less screwed up than I am today. My favorite part about BCIT is being able to look at everything afterwards and having everyone look at all of our work. One of the greatest things about BCIT was honestly directing and editing my music video. It was really fun because I got to choose whatever song I want and it happened to be Pearl Harbor Sucks, because it does. My favorite memory is when me, Aurora, and Matt did auditions for Three Days Street and we had like two hour breaks, four hour breaks, and we watched a scary movie. And then I had to sleep with my light on for three days because <laughs> I can't do scary movies. <laughs> Yeah, I actually got video of it. Yep. Hold the clip. Wham. So, uh, one of my favorite moments here at this program was meeting all these new people, these cool classmates that I had and that I've worked with, and they're great. The biggest lesson I learned in BCIT is that I can consume 17 cups of coffee before my body shuts down. My favorite part of BCIT is watching Matt dress up like a dinosaur for us to film our BCIT promo video. One of my favorite things about BCIT is I was actually able to work on stuff that I actually liked working on in teams that I actually liked working in, and it was really hands-on, so it was probably one of the best things for coming here. So I really like that instead of having academic bigwigs teaching us who don't know, know anything about the real world, we have real working professionals who have connections, who have experience, who know what's out there. Um, the most memorable moment at BCIT for me was when we screened our script adaptations and um, just seeing the uh, actor's delighted face at the whole final product was really rewarding. Wow, so wholesome, so nice, what a great time. Well. The results are in. The votes have been tallied and the envelopes have been delivered. So let's find out who our winners are. The award for best prop. Can I get a drum roll from the audience, please? And the award goes to Aurora Peters for her work on split ends. I can't believe my ball of tinfoil won. I can't believe you guys voted for me. A lot of people made fun of me for this, but I put a lot of hard work into it. Uh, I want to thank my mom for letting me spray paint it on the lawn. And uh, yeah, it was still wet in the morning, but you know, we had to film with it anyway. So I apologize to the actors for having to inhale that. Um, but yeah, I would like to thank everyone for voting for me. And yeah, That's thanks Matt. That's <laughs> enough. Thank you, Aurora. Let's get on to best performance by a classmate. I'm sure it was a pretty tight race. Can I get another drum roll from the audience, please? And the award goes to, oh, an upset. Somebody not usually known for their acting, Antonio Faria. I'm just gonna, just gonna lower this for my height right here. Okay. So, you know, obviously, I deserve this award. Uh, I am clearly the best actor of this program. Uh, I, if you, it, it can be shown by uh, all the videos I'm in during the show. I, I, I deserve this. It's not just because I'm a producer. Okay, that's enough. That's enough. Jeez, how short is this guy? Come on. All right, and now, our final award of the night. The Palme d'Or, the best picture. The Beijing Film Festival's coveted Crying Monkey Award, if you will the award for sleepiest boy. And the winner is, can I get a drum roll please? And the winner is Isaiah Lopez. <laughs> Isaiah, where you at? Isaiah? Oh, sorry, my bad. Isaiah's actually the director of our show, so he can't be here to accept the award. Do we have a camera up there? Can we get eyes on Isaiah? What's he doing? Oh, uh, of course. Ah, uh, classic Isaiah. Well, no wonder the show's been so bad. Our director's asleep. Well, I guess, uh, I guess that's the end of our show then. Well, thank you all for coming. And thank you to everyone from Cursed Images and Multiversity for making this show possible. Thank you to all of the instructors for teaching the skills that we need to pull this off. And thank you, Ja, for believing in me all along. Rest in power, King. All right, it's been a pleasure. Thank you, and good night.